Ray, I see you. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. JJ, what up? <clears throat> Welcome to episode 76 of the Positive Impact Podcast, where we talk about all topics relevant to the game I love. I am your host, Terrell Dozier, and in our first episode of 2021, we have founder and CEO of Crossman Basketball, Mr. Ronaldo Crossman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's happening? Yes, sir. Nah, shirt is everything. I need that. I need that. How we doing? Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you also, bro. I'm doing well. Um, just working. Trying to figure it out. Trying to start a business. Trying to uh, build a successful business. So within that takes hours. No doubt. No question. No question. We're gonna dive into that first first and foremost, man. Tell me how you um how you doing with this pandemic, how you getting along. I'm doing all right. Um I think it's probably a blessing that I don't spend too much time uh with family. I know family sometimes can get especially with older parents, um, and just some people in the family who are a little older, you feel a bit unsettled. Uh walking into this space and spending time and especially with me right now um I'm doing okay but one thing about basketball that uh rings true whenever is it really doesn't stop and uh kids are still especially down in the south very much still in the gym so um from my standpoint I'm just trying to be as safe as possible um but within that I can't I can only stop a certain amount also before it's like take major precautions, be as safe as possible, um, but the work can't stop. Uh, and I wish it could, but um, at this point, I mean, we're working, but uh, the family is healthy, which is a blessing, and um, it's all I can really ask. You know, I, I, I would want everyone to remain as healthy as possible and be as safe as possible and wear masks, um, and hopefully here in the next few, we can get through this and get back to whatever the the new norm will be. Absolutely. Absolutely. So take me back to the Genesis, man, and, and tell me how you, you know, you fell in love with this game, how you were introduced to this game um, that, that you love, that you love so much and continue to give back to so much. Absolutely. Um, I was kind of, I was born into the game. I was one of those kids who um, just from birth. So I can remember two, three years old where you had the Fisher Price hoop. Um, and then my father, very much involved in the game. Uh, he's a big reason why. Big reason why you know, I fell in love with the game. But um, in upstate New York, he had a very big presence. Uh, he was one of the first people who kind of got into the AAU scene. Mm -hmm. uh, he coached at Notre Dame Bishop Gibbons. And in my childhood, I was just always, it was always hoop. Um, water boy, uh, and then I mean, every day, every day, basketball. Uh, he, my father, her crossman, brought uh, Sam Perkins up from New York City. Um, so we're also tied to the North Carolina family, and um, he's been an everyday, uh, and I, obviously, now you know, you're a man. and the best part is to be able to give back and share your experiences through the same game. Um, and that's what I'm most thankful for. Cool. I like that. Now, a lot of respect for your dad up there, man. Heard a lot of great things about your father up there. Um, so take me through high school with it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, were we a big time high school player? Like, how did that end up for you um, going through high school? You said you were born into the game. How did that transition into high school? Yeah, so one thing that kids need to take heed to that I didn't when I was young was uh, when my father told me to go work on my game. 
And we were, when we grew up, we kind of just played. You know, we we go to the park um, and be at the park all damn day long. So there's levels too, or there's just a difference between uh, training and working out and playing. So um, I was a decent high school basketball player. We had a pre- we had a pretty good team. Um, he had some teams before, so I played for my father also at Bishop Gibbons. He had a couple teams before with uh, Anthony Weiss, Kashif Amid, uh, Joe Taylor, uh, Antonio Delgado. He also had Lionel uh, before Lionel finished up at Albany High and a number of So um, we never won sectionals. We made it to the sectional final. Um, but as far as me as an individual, I was a decent player. I was a coach's son, so I knew how to – I understood how to play the game and uh, control a game, but I never – I didn't work on my game enough, so I was more of a – I can knock down threes and I can control the tempo of the game. But as far as uh, improving on quickness and really having a shot where you're jumping up off the floor, you got pull-up jump shot and create your own shot. Um, and then I just kind of lacked athleticism a bit. So um, competitive, but nothing where it would translate to uh, a much higher level. Um, so from high school – I went to SUNY Fogel Steel um, in 2004. We had pre- two pretty good teams, um, one of the best teams in Fogel Steel's history. Mm-hmm. So at the collegiate level, but, um, you know, one thing that I didn't do that now I'm in the lives to tell kids is you got to do your schoolwork. Uh, <laughs> even if you just like school, um, it's an investment, and sometimes we got to do things that we don't like. So even if I wanted to transfer out, um, as a, a, after getting a two-year degree, my grades weren't good enough because I was playing, yeah. playing. And um, that's why, again, one of the reasons why I felt conviction to, to jump out of college basketball and kind of be on the front line and help some of these kids earlier than I was able to uh, at the college level uh, because we, we, we want to try to avoid um, and help some of these kids not miss the opportunities that uh, they're definitely – capable enough to acquire, but uh, just need some guidance and some people to really uh, push them and hold them to a certain standard. Now, no question, you know, so, you know, one, you know, a big reason, you know, I follow you or you follow me, our, our missions are pretty much aligned, you know what I mean? And, and getting into kids early on the grassroots level. Um, so take me down to UNC Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're there now, but, you know, like, take me to the beginning of Ronaldo and, and, and Charlotte, North Carolina. Before I got to Charlotte, um, when I finished at Cobleskill, first of all, we talk about playing, right? Playing mm-hmm. to two degree. That should never happen. But right. it does. Thank you. I finished. But um, all along, I knew that school was needed to be a priority. Um, I just come from a family and parents who that's just and that's what you're supposed to do um, flip ups along the way there's going to be times of immaturity um and there's going to be it's going to take some figuring out so it just took me some figuring out um i took a couple years off once i graduated from global skill um just to work and try to figure out exactly what it was that i wanted to do right that's so extremely important because kids want to make their parents proud kids want to make other individuals proud uh, and they jump into school and they don't know what they want to study. So they end up graduating with certain degrees that they're not passionate about. And now you graduate, you got a four year degree, you got some type of debt, maybe you went on scholarship. Regardless, you're not, you're not utilizing your degree. So I needed to find something that I had interest in. I was definitely was one of the kids who um, didn't love school, didn't have a passion for school, um, and probably underachieved throughout. But at the end of the day, you have to get the job done one way or another. Um, so I was home. I was in Albany. Uh, I'm a big disliker of snow. That's why I'm, uh, that's why I'm where I am now. Right. I had some family down in, in Charlotte. My, my, grand, my grandmother was here. Uh, I had a couple cousins, a couple aunts. And uh, UNC Charlotte had exercise science. And over the years, me taking some time off, I realized that I needed to find something that I could relate to in some form or fashion. Uh, it wasn't going to be sitting behind a desk. It wasn't going to be crunching any numbers. It wasn't going to be sales. Um, and I was blessed 
again, by the game of basketball to always uh, care for my body and always want to be in shape and just uh, look a certain way and then my, for my body to perform a certain way. So when I chose exercise science and I got into UNC Scarlet, that was a big reason why um, I was able to make that connection. Um, and then even prior to then, if we're talking about myself as a coach and trying to figure out that I wanted to be a coach, um, I graduate from, from, from SUNY Cobalt Skills, still no coaching history. Um, and then I actually was coaching with Coach Lucius Jordan and I, who's at, obviously, he's at UMass now. Um, he, we were, he was the head coach, eighth grade at Green Tech, and I was his assistant. Um, and that, this is some years ago. Uh, also did City Rock 14U, uh, trying to help Jim as much as possible while I was there, trying to just continue to find ways to be around the game, influence young men, um, and still looking, trying to find who I was and what I was trying to do. Um, and then also, I really found out that I wanted to coach. Uh, they used to do the, the JK in Albany, New York. And there was one year when I put a team in, um, and the team was like, I, and I kind of like recruited, right? It was like I had Taylor, um, I had Jimmer, I had um, Edwin, I had uh, Melquan Bolding. I had a bunch of kids that uh, I had Zampier, and it was just because of the contacts and playing basketball and being involved and just knowing people. So I felt good about my ability to recruit and utilize my network to again, have some type of success. So it clicked that I wanted to coach college basketball at the highest level. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that entailed at all, but that's what the thought was. Um, so from that, from those experiences early, um, I, that was the goal. And from then on, which was 2012, 2011, 2012, that's when I kind of started working towards that every day. Um, to where we are now. So I got into Charlotte. Um, and again, the extremely important part of our process is network. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jim Hart knew the staff at Charlotte. The staff at the time was head coach was Alan Major. And then the guys on the staff was Des Oliver, uh, Orlando Vandross, and uh, Ryan Odom. So Jim called uh, Coach Oliver for me uh, to see if there was a manager available. Uh, I had great interest in it. I didn't know what a manager spot. I didn't know what it was because right. I didn't know a ton of people who were trying to get into college basketball. So now I think it's a little different now. Um, and we kind of just hit the road like that. So I came down to Charlotte and uh, I managed. And now when I was in school, I was serious. I was trying to, my back was against the wall. Um, I was an older upperclassmen. I, I went back to school at 23, 24, and I kind of knew what time it was uh, in terms of not being able to falter in any way. I needed to handle business. I was trying to uh, reach a certain level, and I didn't know what it took, but I knew that I was willing and ready and willing, mature enough uh, to try to figure that out. Now, this question, and I think, I think the piece that sometimes we miss, right? We want to we want the microwave success. You know what I mean? And sometimes we got to start from the bottom and work our way up. And it's okay. You know what I'm saying? So talk about what you got out of being a manager. You know what I'm saying? And and what you learned, right? Because you, you studied the coaching staff there while you were doing that. So talk about what you got out of that. Um. I probably didn't do a great job as a manager mm -hmm. because of um, thinking that be having more of a role or than I should have had. Um, so I was really uh, I was really focused on the school part, and as a manager, to be a really good manager, um, you really, you probably want to treat that like a full time job. Um, because that's the, the guys who are finding opportunity, that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're not in the office three times a week, only for practice, only willing to do certain things. Those guys are in it, and the ones who are in it and they stay in it and they treat it as if they're on staff, those are the guys that bump up. No mm -hmm. problem. Um, now, obviously, the, the, everybody's uh, – path of bumping up is a little bit different trajectory is a little bit different but 
the one way to do a lot of things the right way. And the right way as a manager is to always be in it, um, always be available and always be willing to whatever needs to be done, needs to be done. Um, I learned about college basketball because I've never been in the environment. So you learn about preparation, um, practice prep, uh, video preparation. Uh, you start to learn and see what different dynamics of a team may look like. You get right. to recruiting process. Um, you get to sit in in the office while one of the coaches works scouts, and then you can have conversations about you know what are you look because these are all things I've never been. I've never been in the environment, so. You that that, that it's kind of like you may think you know, but you have no idea because you, you just you haven't been in it. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, I actually didn't like so. I was there for I was a manager for a season and a half, and all along I'm still thinking about graduation. I'm thinking about trying to find the next opportunity. And within me being a manager, I had an opportunity to um, focus on Muxy Bogues AAU program. Um, gentleman by the name of Kevin Ligon, uh, who has done an amazing job of just cultivating programs and getting players and helping players get to the college level, uh, just through working. And then, again, I was a little bit older. So it wasn't like I was a 17-year-old manager. I was a 24-year-old manager. Mm -hmm. Some other opportunities had presented themselves where I was in a, in a space – from a maturation standpoint to now, okay, I can utilize the, 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 man the, the manager, uh, uh, the, the lessons and the network and all those things. And now, I can, okay, let me try to bring it to this and just continue to build the resume. Um, so I, I jumped out as a manager. And again, I don't think I did a great job, to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. I think I could a lot of things better. I think I could have gave more time. Um, but I was also really concerned about my schoolwork. And I was a person who... I need to study a lot. <laughs> if it, I'm going to go to class and we're going to prepare a little bit and we're going to be good with exercise science, especially for me. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of times it's like, you know, guys can study and look at a board and be good. But with exercise science, conceptually, you had to understand. And for me to understand conceptually, it took a lot of time. Um, so that was probably where I went south a bit where there was the school at, that point was a little bit more important than managing. Um, but again, I did a better job and I could have uh, been a bit better in my approach. Um, but again, the experience definitely wor worthwhile. And then the, the AAU experience with, with Muzzy's program, um, one of the main players on that team was Grant Williams. Mm -hmm. Einstein has given me just that experience to be around him as a young man. Um, he might have been a rising junior maybe like a sophomore summer mm -hmm. so you're just around <clears throat> you have a memory of how he was to how he is now and it just helps knowing more about the game and players and upsides and what he possibly could be uh and it's just because you just you've been able to put yourself in certain environments and be around um a number of kids who some go to a high level some fade out and then you can kind of see why and where and it just helps knowing. Um, yes. And that's like, I, I was a manager for about a, about a, a season and a half. Um, and I, I, I speak to Coach Major to this day. Yeah. And he knows that I know and I've ex expressed to him, man, I, I know I could have done a better job, but you learn, for, you learn, for, you learn from that stuff. Um, so next opportunities, I've been a ton better because I know from my mistakes, how it needs to be and how it looks. Right, no question about it. So again, I think in today's world of basketball in general, everybody wants to be at the highest level. But the reality is everybody can't be at the highest level. So everybody can't be the Coach K's and everybody can't be the LeBron's, right? But basketball still goes on. So. Talk about your experience as an assistant coach at Skidmore, right, which is a Division three program, far away from the Blue Bloods, but nonetheless still important. Talk about your experience there and what you learned. Um, when I got the Skidmore job, the head coach, Joe Burke, he 
uh, was before he got at, before he got to Skidmore, he was an assistant at Cornell. From a conceptual standpoint, which that's got to be the most important. It's it's not the most but from a conceptual standpoint, when I got environment, I learned so much quick. Um, when I was at Charlotte, I was on court. I was verbalizing to teach concepts. So when I got to when you're at a degree program, in most cases, you're the only assistant. Um, and in most cases, you're a young assistant. So uh, my, 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 my ears were, my, uh, I was wet behind my ears, no doubt. Um, and I just kind of worked as hard as I could at being who I was, the best of me, which was extremely personable, um, recruiting my tail off, trying to build relationship and um, doing whatever it took to help coach win. And I, again, I learned a lot from, from an offense perspective, defensive perspective. And then you also learn the operation side um, where you're worried about travel uh, and you're worried about food and uh, you're worried about all the things that are point A to point B before you get to the game. Mm -hmm. And then you, I mean, you learn uh, game planning and you learn at the beginning and all the things that a coach is trying to put into uh, all the things that he sees for that team being and starting from the beginning and implementing day by day, game by game, and trying to get to you being your team, being your program, being the best that they could be uh, towards the end of the year. And um, all those things I was able to learn. And uh, at, at Skidmore, again, when you're the only assistant, I mean, you're asked, you're asked a lot. You're asked to do I was, I was ready and willing because at the end of the day, my goal is still I'm trying to coach college basketball at the highest level. I know that this is a step. This is my foot in the door. And I'm going to make the most of this opportunity. Um, and beyond those things, I'm going to try to influence as many young men as I can to just try to help them achieve and see things that they can't see for themselves. Um, and I thought I did a pretty good job of that. Um, and a big reason why I was able to do so was because of Coach Burke and um, his support and, and tutelage um, to help me get to that point and win a number of championships while we were there. And that's kind of icing on the cake. So um, you just see what championships look like. You see, you, you feel like, you feel what they're supposed to feel like. So now my approach in anything I do, it's like, I, I know what it feels like. I know uh, the standard that it's supposed to, uh, that, that everyone has to try to um, work at. And if everybody does work at it, then we got a chance. And no not on the same page. And then it comes down to like who your personnel is. You just got some guys who just to another team and maybe so but in most cases I vote the best teams that I've been on it's been one through 15 uh, everybody on the same page everybody working towards the same goal and I was able to see those things at Skidmore because we were we were able to win a number of years um, again which is a huge blessing no doubt no, no doubt and so we talk about the D3 level and now let's talk about the D1 level. Talk about how the Yale opportunity came about. Well, the, only, the, the only difference between levels anymore is it's not skill. Mm -hmm. It's faster um, in most cases. Uh, and then Yale came about because when you're coaching, um, one thing that you want to do is you always want to be in it. You know, there was a there was a there was a time where one of the coaches at Charlotte asked me to do something. I had a really good relationship with him. I was like, nah, coach. Dang, you do that. In hindsight, just just you you need to do that. That's you're trying to get that's a test. You know, they're asking you for a reason. They can ask somebody else. Um, but I say that to say you want to try your best myself even now to always be in it. If you're going to be the best, you need to always be in it. You need to always be available. Somebody always needs to see your face. Um, 
So what I did at Skidmore was I just worked. I just grinded. And I put myself in a position, especially while I was at Skidmore, where I don't have – I only need to take care of myself. So I didn't owe time to anybody else. I, I didn't have – I don't have any children. I have a girlfriend. I'm just going to work um, because I knew that that's what it was going to take. Um, so I was working Yale basketball camp. Um, I was working the elite camp, and what you do as a Division three assistant in most cases is you try to go work uh, Yale, uh, Harvard, Penn, and Princeton because though a lot of those young men, very few of them can, can be Division one basketball players and um, be on the system. So a lot of those kids, they don't know the level, they don't understand the level, some are talented, some are really good in the, in the, in the area that they play in. Um, but the level and the difference is just, again, bigger, stronger, faster. So for those camps, and I would work and be who I was. And I, I've always been, and not always, because your confidence comes from repetition. Um, I was very loud and vocal. <laughs> I would be on the court, whatever I'm asking the players to do. I can do, you're going to see me sweat. And whoever is at that camp is going to know who Coach Crossman is, and they're going to know Skidmore College. And that was my, that was my approach. Um, so I just worked my tail off. I was able to network with a, a couple of the coaches on staff, or the staff in general. Um, and I did that for two summers. And also, while I was at Skidmore, you can – Coach AAU, so I was also helping out. I was also helping City Rocks out, um, and that probably helped a bit also. Uh, network, who do you know, who can speak to who to co-sign for who you are and uh, your character, because at the end, you're not getting a job not knowing anybody. Mm -hmm. There's too much on the line, and it's too close-knit of a family, no matter the program. Right. Uh, so, no question. So a couple of years at Yale, a couple of winning seasons at Yale. I see you got the big ring on right now. But you made a big decision this year yeah. to walk away from coaching, something that you worked so hard to get to. And you made a decision this year to go out on your own. Take me through that process and, and give me the why of that. We during a pandemic and everything stopped. Um, I know that you remember the Ivy League being the first league that said we're not going to have a uh, championship. And when that decision was made, I came down to Charlotte because you know, I was going to die. I just had time to think. Uh, and when all the programs in that time were trying to find ways to still get better, we're trying to find you're trying to find ways to watch film. You're trying to find ways to uh, continue to speak to people. Um, you just you're always you're always trying to make your program better, um, and everybody was trying to adapt. And I was the operation, right? So beyond studying and getting on some, you know, watching some clinics and speaking to some people here and there, I can't really do nothing. That's how I felt. I felt like tied, like. And I was so ready to be able to give my characteristics like I was when I was at Skidmore, getting on the road, talking to people, building, building relationships. Um, and those, when I took the op job, I took that job uh, because I knew that that was a stepping stone to get to um, the assistant spot that we had been working so hard for. Uh, but fast forward, I, I was having a conversation with one of my buddies who um, – he does some training in South Carolina, and I was just, I was on the phone, I was in the car, you know how coaches do when they're in the car, call people, have conversations, try to catch up with people that you haven't been able to touch base with, um, and I was telling him all these things that he should be doing for his business, do this, do this, do this, do this, and when I got off the phone, I'm like, oh, you should go do that, Charlie, and I just saw a vision, um, and prior to that, I had been training, I had went back home 
And um, a couple kids or a couple parents had asked me that I had worked with prior to leaving, you know, do you want to come work the kids out? And uh, they were younger kids. I wasn't thinking much about it. But I, when I was at Yale, I, I couldn't get on the court. I could not coach. Um, and if I did, very, 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 very limited amount. So I could count on one hand how many times I had trained anybody, player developed in a couple years. Mm -hmm. When I trained, I felt so – I just felt like a, a, a burst of energy, like, damn, I miss being on the court. I miss being able to touch the kids and teach them and influence. Um, so that cooped with the conversation I had with my friend and just the position that I was in in, in my life where um, – not to say I wasn't willing to do another year as the ops at Yale, um, but I felt good about moving back to Charlotte. Um, my girlfriend lives in Virginia, so I felt good moving closer to her. And um, I felt that with my experience over the last 11 to 12 years, that there was a lane for who I was, what I had learned, and um, just me being confident in myself that I could influence a lot more kids than I was able to at the college level. Um, and again, we're in a time where the positive influences more than ever um, and people that are gonna hold them accountable uh, and people that are gonna challenge them and not challenge them every once in a while, but all the time. And I felt really good about being able to do that um, while staying in the game and then not knowing what it looks like in the future. But I feel confident also that with what I'm doing now and the network that the network that I'm that I have that I'm gonna be able to build upon with the players that I'm gonna be working with and the families that I'm gonna be able to help that if college basketball is then I feel confident I can get back. Um, I do feel confident about that because of the network and I know a couple I have a number of friends who at some point they're gonna 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 need somebody to that they trust to be on staff. And by that time I should be able to recruit North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia. And then I'm I'm really a commodity. Um a lot of guys don't understand that you gotta be most you gotta be a commodity to get hired. You gotta be able to get players. You gotta have your get ties. Like you're not gonna be on nobody's staff and Coach is like, hey, do you know him? You're like, nah, coach, I don't really know him like that. <laughs> I just felt good about I, I just I saw the vision. I saw across from basketball. Um, I saw that from a conceptual standpoint that um I'll be able to teach the game. And it's kind of progressed since I've been here. It's been six months, but it's kind of I didn't know one thousand percent what it looked like, but now I kind of see lane of being really strong conceptually, um, being really strong in the importance of just being uh, good fundamentally. And um, that's the lane for most kids. Most kids aren't going to be the skill kids. Most kids are going to be the fundamental kids. And those are the kids that the coaches trust. So having the experience at Skidmore, high academic, playing the right way, having the experience at Yale, high academic, playing the right way, um, the network. And then just, I felt at my age, I was uh, still relate where I'm not too old or like, no, who's coach? I, I feel you, but you're kind of bugging. Um, <laughs> had experience and, and honestly, like the, the Yale and the Skidmore and then the championship pedigree, I feel like, listen to me. You should listen to me. And a lot of kids will, and then some kids won't. But as long as I'm doing my job, I try and give that same message to every young man, every uh, young woman that uh, I, I have a chance to be extremely fruitful in my passion still. Um, and you get to, you know, make your own schedule and move how you want to move. But now it's like on. It's on for real. Um, but I'm okay with that. And I'm ready for the challenge. Nah, I love, I love that mention is also not just player development because I do want to develop into just how your stuff has developed, right? You've learned and now you're in a lane where you have the experience to have conversations with people and uh, maybe it hasn't been as fruitful as you may have liked at the beginning, but now with your experiences, now it's like, oh, 
now I know exactly, and I needed that. Um, I'm going to do college recruitment consulting. So with the experience of recruiting and understanding the admissions process, understanding requirements, understanding what coaches are really looking for, understanding levels, um, helping parents and coaches maneuver through that, um, I feel like that's another way where I can kind of help um, and be ex extremely helpful because of the experience that I have. Nah, no doubt about it. So I went to the mailbox the other day and I had this this dope T-shirt in the mail, this Crossman basketball T-shirt. But two things I liked about the T-shirt. Well, three things. One, it was a gift. Two, what you put on the back of the T-shirt. So work to get open, reverse the ball, cut the score, jump stop, make the extra pass. First, I want you to explain why you put that on the back, and then I'll get to the third thing that I liked about it. If the young players are able to do those things, as individuals, they have a chance to be on the court. That's giving themselves the best chance to be on the court. And as a team, if you have a group of players that are playing with those principles offensively, um, you got a chance to win championships. Mm -hmm. um, I, those are those are principles that I learned at Yale. Those are principles that I learned at Skidmore. Um, so if you can coop those principles with your skill, then you, I mean you got the best chance. Uh, and there's so many young players who aren't held to those standards. And I'm not saying the ball just gets rolled out, but some people if you, if you know you know, and players are being taught those principles offensively, um, that makes for efficient basketball. It makes you uh, giving up yourself for the team and playing off of two feet is going to save you some extra possessions and making an extra pass is going to go give you uh, from, a good, from a good shot to a great shot. And each of those principles, when I either a parent or a coach or a player especially when I give it to the kids, it's like they're in class, they're in school. You know, I'm like, you know, what is working to get open? Do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. Especially young kids, I, I, I'm, do, what, how do you, what is a ball reversal? Do you know what that is? What is it? And the kids, they, they've never had those conversations. Um, so I feel, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to think of, um, putting that on a shirt, I feel like it's beneficial to everybody who's in the basketball world, no matter the, um, if you're playing basketball the right way. Uh, and and it, honestly, I think it gives kids incentive. I'm, you know, I'm like, hey, when you wear this shirt, when you wear it, you have to know how to play basketball. Mm -hmm. It's going to give them, you know, they, it, everything might not add up right now, but at some point, they go, oh, that's on the back of the shirt. I'm, and I'm, <laughs> I've been telling you that from the yeah. beginning. <laughs> It'll save a lot of kids um, time on the bench. It'll save a lot of kids uh, frustration with not understanding what coaches is asking for and what coach is looking for. Um, because one thing that is consistent across the board, at especially the college level, like a lot of there's only a small percentage of kids who go from high school to the league, or you go from high school to Kentucky balls in your hand. Um, you have to know how to play the game. Coach has to be confident in your ability to carry out the game. And those things on the back of the shirt, you're going to start learning. And a lot of kids are learning it now, no doubt. But that's what they teach. At no, mm -hmm. The only thing that's different on that shirt than the, lead, the NBA is that a lot of those guys are playing off of one foot. Mm -hmm finishing around the, ba the basket a little bit differently. And you need to be able to play off of one foot. Don't get me wrong. But if you play off of two, you're because he knows that you're not going to be making rush decisions. No doubt. No doubt. And so I want to tell you the third thing that I liked about my package, and then we're going to get ready to wrap up with three questions. 
So the third thing that I liked about it was the thank you card that I got in there. Um, and I think it's important, especially now that we support one another. And so I'm a big believer in that. Like, you know what I mean? I, I support those who support me. And I want to see everybody win. And, you know, I applaud you for taking a chance and betting on yourself. Um, you know what I mean? So thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. And I will continue to support you in, in whatever it is that you do. Um, so as we get ready to wrap this thing up, I want to ask three quick, quick hit of questions. And the first thing I want you to do is I want you to put your coach's hat on and I want you to give me a five. Any level doesn't really matter to me. Give me a five with you as a coach and you don't feel like you'll lose. Like all time, it just don't matter. Whoever you want, you won't lose. I'm not gonna go like all time crazy list. I'm just gonna give you some guys who I think are really good in their position. Um, at the one, uh, I want I want CP3. Okay. I want CP3 because uh, he's always gonna give you what you need. He's gonna make you play, no doubt, and he's gonna lead both of you. Need a point guard who is going to open his mouth um, and talk to teammates and, and lead not only vocally. I mean, he's always in it. He's not off. So I want CP3. Um, I, I I'd take I'll take uh, I'll take Kobe at the two. Kobe at the two. Um, he's just special, special talent. Um, mm -hmm. I think about every day. Yeah. Out and out, working the way that I, that I, that I know that he would be working, I'm up because yeah. I don't want to, like being in vain. So I'll take Kobe at the two, regardless of what he did on the basketball court. We already know that but that speaks for itself. Right. <clears throat> um, at the three. Uh, about a while I was thinking, uh, I'll take, I'll take Pippen at the three. Okay. Uh, that kids should be trying to embody because he did whatever it took, um, to fulfill the requirements of that championship team, knowing that he could have probably did a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It's important for kids to know that you're not always going to be a girl, but mm -hmm. you need to do that you are. Um, and the team success, your indiv individual success will come with the team success. Right. Bob, I'll take, um, I'll take KG. I guess I'll take KG because I just love that. I love the attitude. I love the aggression. I love the confidence in the world. It was better than me on any night. Any night. I got supreme confidence in who I am, and we're going to feel me. Um, and it was never in an out-of-control way. And I think what players need to understand is that you can play like that, but it has, you have to be under control. Mm -hmm. Can't let your um, enthusiasm and energy deter what the game plan is, or put you in situations where you could lose a game because you were out of control. That can't happen. Unacceptable. Mm -hmm. I'm taking KG because he was able to put all those things together. Um, my five. Take. Um, I take Isaiah Stewart. <laughs> I five. He's not a four, right? He's, four, he's a five. I'll take, I'll take Isaiah. Put him at the five. Put him at the five. I'm taking through is because um, I like I love how he boxed out um, uh, 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 Gian, uh, Giannis last night. You see how he boxed mm -hmm. 
love that. I man, I, I was watching that and I was so proud of him because he don't he doesn't mean anything by it, but I'm gonna work and mm -hmm. let nobody, no matter the stature, MVP, whatever your measurements are, I'm at you. Yeah. I think he's got one of the brightest futures of anyone who was drafted this year, regardless of uh, what 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 uh, what spot he went in, in the draft, he's gonna work. He's gonna um, be respectful. He's gonna pull guys uh, up who are under him, who are connected to him, his family, and he's just gonna work. He's gonna work. He's gonna work. So um, take that five. I know it's kind of skewed, but that's a great five. Nah, that's all right. It's all good. It's, it's your five. You know what I'm saying? So. You're having a dinner party at your house, dead or alive. You can invite three people, dead or alive, to your dinner. Who would that be? My father, um, Dean Smith, Dean Smith, and a Muhammad Ali. Okay, it's a nice dinner. Love that dinner. That's the best dinner ever. <laughs> the best one ever. Um, and I say those to people because I really enjoy who Ali was and what he stood for. Mm -hmm. And I still want I want to get to a point where I'm more vocal about certain things that I believe in and knowing right from wrong and speaking on those things and really not caring what the backlash is of what people think and just standing up for what I know is right. So I want to, you know, I, I, I really, the things that he did and continue to perform at the level he performed at beyond commendable. And then Coach Smith, I mean, I'm a Carolina, I'm a Carolina guy again. So, you know, I, I, I never was able to meet him. I, you really don't get to see a lot of film about, or conversations or interviews. You see some stuff, but I would love to have a conversation with him. And then, I mean, my father is he's better. He's he's greatest. He's greater than all those guys. So mm -hmm. I have that conversation and really be able to pick their brains and um, allow for them to school me and, and, and teach me. So um, that's quality. I wish, you know, I'm, I'm going to make for that to happen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Last question that I always end up with. When it's all said and done, how does Ronaldo cross and want to be remembered? Um, in a positive way. Um, I want to change lives. I want to help kids um, reach goals that never were imaginable or they couldn't have done it without me. Um, and I just want to be as fruitful as possible. Um, I want to be somebody who's touched so many people, um, and uh, if I can just carry myself the right way, I'll be in a good position at the end. Just got to continue to step my game up. No question about it. No question about it. Ray, man, I appreciate you coming on here and chopping it up with me. It's always good catching up with you. Um, We'll be talking soon. We got a lot to build on. And good luck to everything that you're doing down there, man. I know you're going to be great, man. Keep up the good work. Man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate you. We'll talk soon. All right.